Their job required them to fish during a cool night uh -huh. when the fish was in. After a long night of fishing, all that was left was to clean the camp, uh -huh. mend the net, and sell the fish to those who sold in the market. For these men, fishing was a lucrative business. In fact, some of their kids would be salted down and transported, no doubt, all the way wrong. Uh -huh. Who knows, maybe even Caesar himself would someday eat of the fish they caught. Uh -huh. In the Sea of Galilee, as they finished their work for the night, preparing to go home and sleep a few hours before, they must return to their, to their boat for another day's work. Uh -huh. A man they all knew had <coughs> by on shore. Uh -huh. that Lord, Lord. He only spoke just a few words. Uh -huh. But to those <coughs> words, those words that he spoke would change the course of their life forever. Amen. Jesus is called. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Such may have been the sin there on the Sea of Galilee that morning mm -hmm. when Jesus passed by the boat where Peter, John, Andrew, and James were working. Uh -huh. His call to those four men forever changed their lives. Amen. You see, the public ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is just the beginning. Uh -huh. One of his first acts was to choose those 12 men to do the work of God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I said all that to say this. Jesus is still calling to folks today. Yes. Yes. He was still calling us. Yes to come to him for salvation. Mm -hmm. He is calling us to come to him for service. Mm -hmm. This is very careful. Is the Lord calling this morning? The verses that we have read today reveal something about the matter of the Lord's call. Uh -huh. In fact, there are several laws that are revealed in these verse concerning the call of God. So we are going to examine just a few of these laws. Let us do so. Uh -huh. Let us listen very carefully. So when he calls, we will know who he is. Amen. As we look at these characteristics that mark the Lord's call, I will ask the question again. Is Jesus called? Mm. And do we have what it takes to accept the call? Has he been speaking to our heart about salvation, our service? I believe the marks that we will study today will help us see that which the Lord has planned for us. Yeah, yeah. So one of the characteristics of the Lord's call is that his call is perfect. Uh -huh. Amen. This is seen in the fact that he walked up to those boats and mm -hmm. called those four yeah, men yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. There were no doubt other boats anchored there that uh -huh. day. But Jesus chose to call the men in those two boats. <laughs> he called them personally. Mm -hmm. So it is with us. The call of the Lord is an intensely personal matter. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. 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 He did with us, and he does so one-on-one. -on -one Amen. Uh -huh. When Jesus calls those four men, he finds them working. <laughs> Peter and Andrew was casting their net. Uh -huh. John and Jane was mending there. Yeah. It seemed that his call to them fit perfectly with their personality. Uh -huh. Isn't that just like Jesus? Mm -hmm. For instance, mm -hmm. Peter and Andrew was always casting their gospel uh -huh. They were either preaching Bible sermons, <laughs> minding somebody you know, or they were out witnessing to people. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. They were casting their net. On the other hand, James and John seem more interested in mending the net uh -huh. to ensure that the fish caught by the other did not be <laughs> The point here is this. The Lord designed and gifted each of us uh -huh. individually and for a purpose. He will take us with our strengths uh -huh. and our weaknesses. So nobody has to be perfect. And he will use right. us to do his work. Yeah. Now, not all of us Come on, have the same gift. Amen. But God has a personal plan for each of 
for us to make? Yes, the question is, are we still in that place? Or are we somewhere we shouldn't be? Hmm. Hmm. And then we must understand <laughs> that his call is Christ. Uh -huh. When Jesus passed that day, the real call was felt in the hearts of those four men who left all to follow him. Yeah, yeah. No doubt their hearts were touched, and they felt a strange power drawing them to go after Jesus. Now notice here in verse 20 that neither Zebedee nor the servant Received the call. Uh-huh. All right. All right. This call was first. <coughs> Amen. So even with any call from God, no man knows what is happening in a person's heart right. until they make the fact of what God is doing to come. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. His call is personal and private. Mm -hmm. It is between the Lord and the person with whom he is there. Right. Uh -huh. Now note here that evidently the Lord had been built into the hearts of these men since they had first met him. That explains why they reacted instantly when he called them to follow him. Mm -hmm. I wonder, church, <laughs> what did the Lord say to our hearts? Is, <coughs> is he calling us to be saved? Is he calling us to some kind of <coughs> service? Hello? Is he calling us to leave all and follow him? And then we need to understand that his call is public. Yeah. The Lord does his private work, but he gets no glory until his work is yes. made public. Yes. Yes. These men are called upon to make a public stand for Jesus. Uh -huh. They are called upon to publicly line themselves up That's right. with him. That's right. His doctrine mm. and his program. Uh -huh. Somebody said give his program. The Bible speaks of servants of the Lord who try to keep their love for him quiet. Joseph in John 19 and 38, and Nicodemus in John 7 and 51. However, their attempt at private service did not last long. God did not save us and call us so that we could hide ourselves away uh -huh. and pretend that we are just like yeah. everyone else. Yeah. His call demands that we take our stand with him, uh -huh. regardless of what, of what others may say about us. Uh -huh. You see, church, we are living in a time that if the evil one has his way, yeah. we will be kept in dark. Uh -huh. And for the ones that are lost and need help, one of the best ways that we can help them uh -huh. is to live openly and honestly yes, yes. for the glory of God. Amen. 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 See, we are called to be salt and light. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Matthew 5, 13 and 16 tells us that we are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its <laughs> where will it be salt? Uh -huh. <laughs> it is this for good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under the foot of me. Ye are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be eaten. Mm, Neither do men light a lamp and put it under the bush, but on the stand, and it shines unto all that are in the house. Uh -huh. Even so, let your light shine before men, yeah. that they may see your good work yeah. and glorify your Father mm. who is in heaven. All right. Amen. Amen. So, if the Lord has called you and me to a work, uh -huh. to be on the job for him, then yeah. those of us who have been hiding our light under a bush, uh -huh. then it's over. Yeah. Now is the time to let our light shine. Yeah, that's right. And now, more than ever. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, Joe, we need to understand that his call is fresh. Yeah. These men were not special people. <laughs> they were not highly educated. Uh -huh. They were not even especially wealthy. They were not among the so-called movers and shakers uh -huh. of that society. Uh -huh. Which reminds us that God can use ordinary people yes, to do excellent yes, 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 yes. Nothing yes. set these men yes. apart from, far from the thousands of other <clears throat> men who lived around the sea of Galilee. Yet the Lord chose them and called them unto mm -hmm. the first of his followers. Mm -hmm. What a privilege those men must enjoy. Yes, yes. You see, church, what I'm trying to 
say to you that this has always been God's way. All right. This thing is perfect. Yeah. He chose David. And every time I, I hear about David, you know they call David prisoner. Uh -huh. But they chose him over all his older larger brothers. Yeah. He chose Moses, who at the ripe old age of 80, uh -huh. was a murderer and a fugitive from justice. He chose Abraham for yeah. all the thousands of other men who lived in the world of the Chaldean. And then Genesis 12 tells us that he, he chose Paul. Yeah who hated the church and who hated Jesus Christ. That was Acts 9, 1, and Timothy 1 and 15. Uh -huh. He chose a small boy and his mother to feed a multitude. Yes, yeah. all right. John 6. Well, Sister Lee, why are you telling us this? We know the story. Uh -huh. I want all of us to see that Jesus often chooses who no one yes, else sir. will choose. Yes. <laughs> that you gon' think should have been there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's gonna be some folks that you say gonna make it happen no. and won't be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we need to understand that it's hard, it's right. <laughs> well, what do you mean? These men were called upon to make some real expensive choices. Yeah. Are you listening? Is Jesus calling? Do we have what it takes? They were to leave their friends their family yes, and their yes. children. Mm -hmm. Basically, the only life that they had ever known. Mm -hmm. They were expected to trade the certain for the uncertain, mm -hmm. the visible for the invisible, yes. the known for the unknown, their ability for their inability, the possible for the yes. impossible. Mama. These <laughs> men do fishing inside and out. Yes. 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 But they were helpless <laughs> when it came to doing what Jesus his call was a call that would cost them everything. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. In the end, the Bible tells us that all but one would die for this man who was calling them to follow him. Yet they determined that the price was worth paying. Uh -huh. The Bible says that they forsook their neck. This word means that they severed all their ties with their neck. Uh -huh. They walked off and left everything. Yeah. But then I am reminded that the Bible tells us that we cannot serve two masters. Amen. Uh -huh. You're going to either love one yeah. and hate the other, yeah. or you're going to cling to one <laughs> and feed another. Uh -huh. So, what is this calling worth? To us, this call is perfect. Uh -huh. Every one of us, as an individual, have to answer the call for our faith. Yes. Now, when the call of Jesus comes, we need to understand that often it will cost us a lot. Mm -hmm. Cost us plenty. There will be those who will not understand it. When Jesus' saving grace comes into our lives, they will not understand the change in our lives. They will not understand the desire to follow him. They will not understand how we can give up everything to follow him. But you see, it, it won't make sense to us. And as a result, many, somehow even our whole family, will turn their back. They will have nothing yeah. further to do with us. Yeah. But let us not forget John 15. Tells us that if the world hates you, you know that it hated me yes. before we hated yes. you. If you was of this world, the world would love you. Yes, sir. But because I have called you out of this world, the world will hate you. Remember these words that I say to you a servant is no greater than a man. If they hated me, they are also yes. empty. Yes. This is why Matthew 10, 37 and 39 tells us that he that loves his son or daughter more than me is not worth. Mm -hmm. And he that does not take up his cross and follow after me yeah, yeah. is not worth yeah, yeah. of me. He that <coughs> finds his life shall lose it. Uh -huh. All right. But he that loses his life for my sake uh -huh. shall find it. 
Sometimes we are called to give up. If to give up is nothing more than net. But other times, we are called upon to walk out on things that are really precious to us. Uh -huh. Do we have what it takes mm -hmm. to accept the call? Mm -hmm. You see, church, we have come to a place in our lives where Jesus is more precious than anything else in this world. Yes, yes, yes. So if anyone tells yes. you that serving yeah. the Lord is an easy road, Okay. Then they'll lie to you. Come on. There will be trials. Glory, glory. Yes, yes, it will. But God never promised them that the road would be easy. Mm. But he did say, I'll be with you. Yes, he did. Until the end of the world. Yes. And then, church, we need to understand that his call is powerful. Yes. Yes. And we know men stepped out of their ship and went out to Jesus, they experienced a powerful change in their life. Uh -huh. Those men could not have went back to their own lives, even though they tried. Why? Lord, because Lord. when you come in contact with yes. Jesus, yes. you will never, yes. ever, never, ever. Yes. When yes. Jesus came Lord. walking by those ships that day, uh -huh. those four men were not wasting their time. Yes. Two was casting nets. This was important. Because if you do not cast a net, you will not get yes. it. Go the they were busy, yeah. Yeah. but they were not yeah. doing anything of an eternal nature. In other words, they would have lived their lives, died, and been forgotten. Yes. Yes. Jesus not called them, yes. and had they not My God. Yes. Yes. So, church, when we make the decision to answer the call, mm -hmm. and he touches mm -hmm. our lives, yes. we will be put in a position yes. where we can be a part of something that will last forever. Yes. In this world, are you laying up your treasure? <laughs> now I'm getting ready to close the thing, I'm getting ready to get a fan, I'm getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> what you tell you to make your election sure. Yes, he did. And for those he justified, he he's also, also glorified. Yes. So 2 Peter 1 through 10 basically teaches us that the elect whose salvation is sure will show evidence of their elect. Yeah. Continuing to live in life and manifesting good works consistent with their salvation. Yeah. 